In this micro nugget, let's enjoy a slice of CBT Nuggets Data Center Unified Fabric Implementation course. That's DCUFI. This is one of the courses that maps to the valued CCNP data center certification from Cisco Systems. Let's specifically zero in on various data center architectures. In fact, let's start by Cisco's tried and true overall approach to a network architecture. If you've been around Cisco for any amount of time, then you know Cisco loves to use a layered architecture model, specifically an access layer, an aggregation layer, and a core layer. I'll review the classic characteristics of these layers with you in a moment. One of the reasons that Cisco so loves this is it allows them to organize products, right? Yeah, sure. One of the things that we can do is we can say, all right, I know that there's equipment called access type equipment from Cisco Systems, and that's going to have its own category, and I know where to go to look for that. But perhaps more importantly, of course, is the properties that we enjoy once we implement one of these layered architectures. For instance, redundancy. When we design an access layer, we can think in terms of redundancy for a particular device that wants to access the rest of the network. We can have redundant devices, we can have redundant links, and it's easier for us to design this redundancy in when we're doing it in a layered approach. Obviously, we love the redundancy because there can be a failure and that's not going to end up in downtime with that key data center service or data center data itself. There's no single point of failure in the design. Something else that we love is load balancing, right? Sure, if we design redundant alternate paths when, and, and we do this on a layer-by-layer -layer basis, we can make sure that we don't overburden, create a choke point, a bottleneck at any one place in the infrastructure. And we love thinking about layered architectures because of the modularity. One of the things about the modularity, by the way, that's so great is fault isolation, right? If we build our network in layers, so we have these separate and distinct layers, and we have a failure in one particular area, it's going to be easier to isolate, easier to troubleshoot when we are in that layered infrastructure. We also have the ability to redesign portions of a layered infrastructure and not have a tremendously huge impact on what is below that layer or what is above that layer. So there are tons of excellent reasons why Cisco has emphasized layered infrastructures in their particular network designs. Let's review, as promised, the access, aggregation, and core classic layers that we might find today still in a modern, modern data center. So the classic access layer and its properties, so named because this is the layer where we access the particular network and its robust services. It's known for high availability. Absolutely, we want to make sure that there is an always accessible access point in the network, right? We can do this with redundant connections. If we drive layer three technologies down to the access layer, which becomes more and more popular these days, we might even use first hop reachability protocols at this access layer. As you know, first hop reachability protocols involve technologies like hot standby router protocol, virtual router redundancy protocol, gateway load balancing protocol. We often hear the term convergence at the access layer as well. Why? Well, we're talking about things like power over Ethernet, wireless LAN support, so ways in which we can get different forms of network traffic into our infrastructure. Again, maybe it's wireless, maybe it's voice over IP with power over Ethernet. We do a lot of security at the access layer. Why? Well, because we know if we secure the access layer, that helps secure the layers that are above it, right? Our security is only going to be as strong as its weakest point, so we really want to control every single layer from a security perspective. And 
that's partially true. We'll talk about how our core layer of the network is going to be offloaded from security concerns. And why is that? Well, it's because of all of the wonderful security we do at other layers in the infrastructure. Security mechanisms abound at the access layer. Things like 802.1x, port security, DHCP snooping, dynamic ARP inspection, IP source guard. In fact, many of these security technologies we'll be reviewing in this particular DCUFI course as they are implemented in the Nexus operating system. QoS certainly lives at the access layer, particularly with the concept of classification and marking, right? We love to do that right as traffic from a particular entity enters the network. If we classify and mark it at the access layer, then downstream or upstream or northbound, however you want to describe it, we can go ahead and act upon those classification and markings for that mission critical traffic. Finally, another parameter or another characteristic of the access layer is the fact that it supports IP multicast. Sure, this is where we have technologies like IGMP snooping in an IPv4 environment or multicast listener discovery, MLD, in an IPv6 environment. And we are welcoming the multicast traffic onto the network and we are ensuring the multicast traffic flows as efficiently as possible only where it needs to flow in our overall network infrastructure. Now, notice something here at the aggregation layer? Sure, we have a lot of the same concerns that we had, and we have a lot of the same characteristics as with the access layer. High availability is key, absolutely. We're doing policy-based aggregation and connectivity here. We're sending some traffic one way, other traffic another way, at this aggregation layer. Notice it is layer three routing that is so absolutely critical in the aggregation layer. We may have layer three routing in the access layer. That's why we may have first hop reachability protocols at the access layer, but traditionally they're definitely found here. This is where VLANs will often terminate, right? And will be routed into the routed infrastructure. QoS is hugely important here, particularly queuing, right? Making sure that particular traffic is prioritized over other forms of traffic during periods of congestion. One of my favorite ways to deal with QoS is to simply throw money at the problem and over-provision circuits. Now we never have competition. Things are being sent right when they arrive. But how realistic is this in practice? So lots of potential QoS mechanisms found in the aggregation layer, just like, and as we described, you're not surprised, we will be doing security mechanisms at this layer. We find things like access control lists at this particular layer that are carefully controlled controlling traffic. We are doing lots of security once again at the access and the aggregation layers so that we can offload that overhead and offload that processing from the very next classic layer that we're going to discuss. There's an old joke that in real estate there's three things that are important. Location, location, and location. Well, certainly with the core layer, there's three things that are important, and that's speed, speed, and more speed. You see, we do all that complex stuff in the other layers surrounding the core layer so that in the core layer, we can have less devices, less cabling, less services, less overhead. We don't want to do a lot of QoS. We don't want to do a lot of security. We don't want to do a lot of policy enforcement. We're just interested in moving bits as quickly as humanly possible, and we are interested in ensuring that we build scalability into the design. What happens when the demands on your data center increase dramatically? Are you able to quickly go in and improve the devices and the bandwidth in the core in order to meet this demand? That is one of the key concerns about the core layer. And again, from a characteristic perspective, I want you to remember it's all about speed and less about those services that we have in the other layers. 
Now, this is really humorous. We go through all that great review of those layered architectures, and that's really, really important stuff for you to know, and it really could even come up in your DC UFI exam, questions about that classic three-layer infrastructure, and then I throw it all out the window. Yeah, and I bring you to an example of the Nexus implementation of a single-tier Ethernet design. See these characters right here? These are Nexus 7000 series boxes. Oh, yeah, we're talking power now, baby. These data center switches collapse the layers right inside themselves. Yeah, it says, hey, this functions as the core. This functions as the aggregation. This functions as the access. We are going to make connections right down to, let's say, C-series rack mount servers, and the access layer is actually going to be implemented through a line card in this wicked powerful device. We have seen this before, by the way, right? We've seen this implemented with Catalyst 6500 switches in particular designs from Cisco Systems. So this is really nothing new. It's just that we have these new data center-centric, data center-designed Nexus 7Ks that can do this. By the way, you could also collapse the layers into a device that's powerful, like the Nexus 5500 series. Now, why specifically the 5500 series and not just any old Nexus 5000 series device? Do you remember anything from your CCNP data center training that might be unique, that might be particular about the Nexus 5500 series that would make it able to do this? Yeah, layer three capabilities. Remember one of the unique properties of the 5500 Nexus when compared to its 5000 cousins is the fact that it can indeed do layer three for us. So that's an ethernet type single tier Nexus implementation. Let me show you a variation of this. And if you've taken my previous courses like CCNP, uh, excuse me, CCNA data center, you're going to be familiar with this concept, but let's review it real quick. So our extended fabric is our powerful variation on this ethernet single tier. You know about this. It's the Nexus 7K or 5K acting as the parent device, right? And a Nexus 2K at the top of rack. That's an important acronym. Uppercase T, lowercase O, uppercase R. Uh, Nexus 2K at the top of the rack, making the nice efficient connections down to our rack mount servers. And this device making its connections up to its parent device. And where do we do all the management? We do all of the management on the parent. So this is acting like a virtual line card that's stuck inside this box, even though it is not, even though it is located out at the top of the rack of, let's say, rack mount servers. So this is our single tier extended fabric design, and this is a pretty new paradigm for Cisco systems, and it's obviously pretty darn cool and pretty exciting. By the way, this is probably a pretty good place for me to remind you about that VM fex technology, right? Sure, the VM fex technology says, okay, on this rack mount server, there is a VM running. And that VM is going to be identified as the traffic leaves the virtual NIC. That VM traffic is going to be identified on this fabric extender, the Nexus 2K. That VM traffic is going to be identified on the parent device. So this is such an exciting capability to have these virtual machine traffic flows literally be identifiable as they move throughout the infrastructure. Remember, this wasn't always the case with virtualization. And this was one of the very few drawbacks that we had in virtualized environments, not being able to isolate the flow coming from a particular virtualized component. 
Now, of course, things can get more complex as your data center grows. Yeah, you may say, you know what? We really do need a dual tier. We need a data center core and aggregation up here. And notice these are our nice 7Ks. And then we have a storage area network component that we need to tie in. Here are the MDS devices, the 9500 series MDS devices. Here's lower end access layer storage area network devices. And notice this is all access layer stuff down here. Notice we're still doing top of rack Nexus 2K stuff. We are doing our rack mount servers connected into that. They are going upstream to a parent device. Maybe even we're going over to what's called an end of rack Nexus 7K or Nexus 5500 series device. So now we bring into this concept of end of rack here in our infrastructure at the access layer. The SAN comes in to these particular devices, right? And one of the ways we can unify these technologies is, of course, with our fiber channel over Ethernet. Yeah, these 7Ks are fiber channel over Ethernet capable with the appropriate equipment installed in them. So we have this nice I.O. consolidation. This blade server can access the LAN and the SAN without a problem through these Nexus devices that notice are reaching out to the SAN environment thanks to fiber channel over Ethernet. So here's a beautiful look, at least it's beautiful in my perspective, I hope it is yours. Here's an awesome look at that dual tier architecture design. And now you see perfectly too, that as this thing grows, as your data center presence becomes larger and more sophisticated, of course, it might truly migrate to that three tier design. Absolutely. You just start to take devices and aggregate them into a core layer. Probably shouldn't say aggregate because that confuses us with then what you have at the aggregation layer. So certainly we can have the classic three-tiered design in the data center. It's typically going to feature 7Ks in the core, probably 5500s in the aggregation and then uh, classically the 2k nexus devices in the access layer but again there are plenty of variations remember one of those key things that we wanted to focus on with data center technologies in this course together was flexibility and there is certainly going to be a tremendous amount of flexibility on how we use these particular devices in a particular architecture other fun stuff that we haven't really talked about but you have a solid background in i'm sure because of your following ccna data center technologies here at cbt nuggets is particular technologies are going to help us like virtual interface cards installed in our servers specifically the ucs P81E virtual interface card from Cisco Systems. That's going to help us with that VMFX technology that we mentioned. We know that we might have a UCS chassis down here with blade servers installed in it. And sitting above that, we have what's called a fabric interconnect. Obviously, those are technologies that are going to help us tremendously building our data center unified fabric architecture. And I want to mention it briefly here because we have not brought it up. But remember, there's a Nexus 4K family of products. And the 4K is designed to reach out to things like IBM's Blade Center solution. So the 4K Nexus is excellent when we have a multi-vendor architecture that we are supporting. So I apologize, this micro nugget went a bit long, but I'm sure you can see why. We just scratched the surface here with our discussion of Cisco data center architectures, but I hope this painted a great picture for you of how we're still gonna use those classic three layers and where we'll find particular Nexus ingredients plugged in. And 
Also, of course, we can't forget about our SAN MDS equipment as we discuss the modern data center. By the way, if you want more information, even more details, if you want to view the full 38 minutes that we did on this subject in our DC UFI class, don't forget, head over to the upcoming videos section if you're watching this micro nugget in January of 2014, because these nuggets will be published as I create them in the upcoming videos section of our website. I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.